What's going on guys? Steven from the Minimasters here and today I'm going to show you how to replace the axle pivot bushing on your truck. So uh, one thing with these old Fords, uh, things wear out. That's with any car. But a particular part that wears out is the axle pivot bushing. And uh, if you don't know much about this year of Fords, after 96, they went away from what is known as a twin I-beam suspension, which is, it kind of looks like scissors, okay? Uh, matter of fact, if you kind of look at this way, there's this beam coming this way, and there's one going there. That's the beam for the other side. It's bolted on this side, and this beam, which is for this side, is bolted on the other side. And it kind of has like a really cantilever type of thing. It was an early independent suspension. But anyway, it puts, uh, there's only three main places it bolts up. Basically, it bolts uh, here at your radius arm, and then of course it bolts at your axle pivot. So they take a lot of wear. So uh, my truck was uh, had a vibration on the highway, steering was a little sloppy, and uh, I started looking around like, hey, you know, how can I how can I fix this? And uh, one of the things I found out was the axle pivot bushings. Now, superficially, it looks like a pretty hard fix. Well, I'm here to show you that. Well, it's not. You can do it. So I've experimented with a few methods of doing this. Matter of fact, I've already changed one, uh, which I did yesterday, uh, right there. And so today I'm gonna get the other side and I think I have a much quicker method of doing it. So here's the, the drill. You're gonna take your wheel and tire off. Uh, when I did this before, I removed the rotor and I removed the caliper, I removed the shock and I removed the spring. You can keep your rotor on, you can keep your caliper on, and you can keep your lower part of your shock bolted. And you, I think you can even leave the spring bolted on. But what needs to be done is you need to unbolt your shock right up top so the bolt will be accessed up here. And then you need to unbolt your spring here, which is kept, the top of your, the spring is kept in by this retaining clip. Basically, it uh, this notch fits in there and like that, and it holds the spring in behind here. So on the spring, it will look like that. So you wanna take that off and uh, the suspension will sag and droop. Now, right now I have a jack under it, so it doesn't just kind of just drop. It won't drop because there's other things still holding on with tension. Uh, so I keep that there to keep everything lined. But once the, the spring comes out, if you want to remove the spring, you need a one and one eighth socket, okay? They don't often come in sets. I had to buy this singly from AutoZone. But anyway, you'll fish that down your spring right on your bolt, and uh, from there you can use a breaker bar. I have used a breaker bar. Now, I heated the nut up. This is something you wanna get. They're at Home Depot, they're $25, 30 because the kit comes with the, the propane tank and this uh, nozzle. Very simple, you don't need a striker, you just pull the trigger, and it goes. So I heated up the nut, and I used a breaker bar to get the other side undone because I didn't have enough impact ext uh, extensions. Today, I pulled the spring out and I actually just axed it directly down the spring without having to go behind here, and I was able to get with the impact. So you can use, you can do either way, impact or breaker bar, but you need this one and one eight socket. So once your spring is no longer a factor, next what you need to do is crawl under there, and you have your axle pivot bushing and the nut that holds it on right there, and uh, yeah, now you can see better. So right there, and uh, it has two sides, so you need a backup wrench. Again, heat it up. It's a, it's a tough bolt to get off, uh, very rusty. This one, I actually had to heat up this axle pivot uh, nut there. Uh, once that comes out, this suspension bar here will droop down like this, or at least you, you can just pull it down. Now, keep in mind, once you've unbolted that, you definitely need the jack here, because the jack's gonna act as your pivot point. You'll be able to droop it down, and then from there, you'll be able to uh, press out the old one and uh, press in this new one. So, I'm gonna unbolt that, and I'll show you how the rest goes. So there you have it as planned. It just drooped right down. As you can see, this one's sagging up to the right. And you can see it's really thin and kind of disintegrating. You can start to see the, uh, the sleeve, the metal sleeve there. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this up and I'm gonna press out that center uh, piece there uh, speaking of uh, heat, I actually wasn't able to fit an impact gun under here to be able to do this properly. So I actually got this off of the breaker bar and some heat. So another win for the uh, breaker bar crowd. Um, anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to push this inner sleeve out. 
and then I'm going to heat up the outer sleeve again and then I'm just going to slowly pry out the, the rubber and leave this metal sleeve there. Now if you were to go with an OE style bushing again, same rubber design everything, you'd have to punch out that sleeve as well. And here you can use a ball joint press with that. So since we're doing an energy suspension uh, bushing, polyurethane, we need to save that sleeve. So all I have to do is get the rubber out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all cleaned out. So there it is. It's all cleaned out best I can get it. So you know, a little, little heat from my heat gun and boom, there it is and all its crappiness. So yeah, I pushed out, pushed out the outer sleeve. You can see right there first and then I pried uh, the rubber piece out with a little short flathead screwdriver. So next is putting the bushing in. So uh, with the packaging, you get the bushing. It's uh, five pieces, so one, two, three, four, and that inner metal suit is five. That's what you get. Along with it comes grease. Anything that touches metal has to be greased. So you have to grease this little bit up. Now, tricky part is pushing them in. You can't just push it in because it's not going to go in. And uh, I called down to my local auto parts place, which happens to be a Pep Boys, and they didn't have a ball joint press. So I made one up. So using a large C clamp, this little jacket, which is from a pulley puller, hence the uh, that OEM brand. Uh, you can also use a piece of half inch copper pipe, anything that will clear the diameter of this. So I did that, two pieces of flat, eighth inch stock bar steel and then I did the clamp around the whole thing and then slowly moving it in I was able to push this inside of the sleeve and get it mounted properly now keep in mind you have to have this because this sleeve thing has to stick out that much because this piece goes over top of that see that which will enable uh, you'd have cushion on either side but that's where you need this jacket because you know so much of that's going to stick out and you need this to clear it so anyway i'm going to go and uh, grease this up press it in and i'll show you what it looks like before i bolt it back up well there it is it's all bolted in didn't go in too bad uh i mean one thing you'll realize when it comes time to use the c-clamp and those pieces of steel that that sleeve it is really awkward to hold four different things all together and balance them midair. Uh, that's where I wish, you know, I was able to, if I didn't like the C-clamp, I would have weld those two things on there and that sleeve. But um, it worked out. So it's in there. It's bolted. I used the, uh, I did use the breaker bar to bolt it back up. So uh, win for the breaker bar. And I don't expect that thing to be coming out anytime soon. Uh, quick thing. If you had a hard time aligning the bolt holes, it all comes down to positioning this arm here. And I was using the jack to do that. So originally I had this down on the jack stand, which I've since raised, it was much lower, and the bolt holes didn't line up. So what I did is I raised the arm here, and that aligned the holes, and I was able to smack the bolt in uh, with the hammer. And actually I didn't really need to hit it that hard, it just kind of went in. So it didn't really damage the threads or anything like that. So keep that in mind. You may need to adjust the arm in order to get the bolt in. Okay, so now that I've completed that, you're probably wondering how long did it take me to do this? Because you're wondering if you can do it yourself. First off, yes, this is something you can do at home. Uh, a pneumatic gun makes everything go a lot easier. Do you need one? Absolutely not. The harder bolts I got with a breaker bar. Uh, in terms of timeline, how much time? From start to finish, this take me about an hour and a half. And that's going to include putting the tire on and putting the suspension pieces back in. So this is very, very doable. Like you can come home from work um, during a week. You can definitely get this done on the weekend plus other projects. Uh, now also you can keep in mind, I did, it may not have taken me that long because you know every, one, every you know, few minutes or so after I complete something, I have to stop, film it, talk to you guys, show you what I'm doing. So it can be much, much shorter than that. But hey, it all comes down to the right tools. Just remember, the heat gets the stuck bolts off. So anyway, I'm going to finish what I'm doing here, clean up, and uh, I can't wait to see what the truck feels like on the highway. 
In the meantime, this is the Minute Masters. Thanks for watching.